Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? 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 Let's Let's turn turn tragedy tragedy to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choate. Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? 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 Let's Let's turn turn tragedy tragedy to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choate. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good middle of the night or early morning hours, whatever it might be, wherever you are. Welcome here to the Thriving Marriage Podcast. We truly have an international audience, and I want to be mindful of that today as we share something maybe a little more specific to what's happening in the United States, where Mark and I are from, but definitely applies to to everyone. Um, so. Just a quick introduction in case you haven't heard from us before. Um, I'm Heather Choate, and I'm here with our head marriage expert here, Mark Johnston. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing as best as I can be, especially considering the, the circumstances that all the recent events going on, but I'm, I'm doing fairly well. Yeah, so I kind of threw a curveball at Mark this morning. Um, we always kind of plan our, our topics in advance. And if you heard our podcast last week, you knew that we were supposed to be talking about uh, creating a unified vision for your marriage. But last night, as I was um, actually going through a, a mindset coaching session myself, because I consider myself always the student, never really the master. And I was working with my coach on some things. I realized, man, this is definitely something that I feel like we really need to talk about this idea of dealing with powerlessness. And so if you're feeling powerless right now, you're not alone. I know that a lot of people will be watching this recording later at a future date. But right now in um, the United States, we witnessed some cruelty. We witnessed some injustice. And we've also seen, you know, the fear, the rage in the hearts of people. And we've seen how a virus. And this is a quote from, um, okay, I can't remember who it's from right now. (laughs) I'll 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 put it in the notes if I can't remember. But a virus 100 times smaller than a grain of sand can bring entire nations and economies to their knees as we're still here dealing with uh, coronavirus throughout the world. And, you know, let alone the often overwhelming challenges that many of us are facing in our marriages and our families and our personal lives. So a lot of us are feeling pretty overwhelmed, stressed, and a lot of us are even wondering what can we do about it, right? It reminds me of that analogy of all the starfish on the sand, right, on the beach that are dying and baking in the sun, and the child is throwing one in one by one, wondering, you know, and then the onlookers wondering, does that even make any difference? So sometimes it feels like the challenges that are before us are so monumental. We wonder how can we even make the smallest difference? So today, Mark and I, we're just going to share some ideas some principles that may serve you um, and honor you in your own journey and, and what works for you, but that have helped us personally, as well as many of the clients that we've worked with to heal, to center yourself and to even empower yourself during uncertain and challenging times. I, I'm glad that you actually brought this topic up, Heather. You know, this has been, my, my wife Jennifer and I have been talking a little bit about this ourselves, especially with the, the current events. Um, for those of you not in the know, there are a lot of protests and even, you know, rioting and a lot of destruction going on in our country. And we're, uh, even this morning, uh, Jen and I were talking as we were getting ready for the day. We're like, okay, with everything going on, what can we actually do about mm-hmm. this? And, you know, I, I was, I, I'll, I'll admit, you know, I was getting kind of the sense of frustration as we were talking about it because I was, I, I was feeling a little bit of this myself. And I, I'm recognizing, okay, I, uh, you know, the end of our, our conversation this morning, I was like, okay, I need to recalibrate a little bit. This isn't sitting well for me to kind of sit in this sort of state. And so, I mean, this is kind of perfect timing, uh, you know, with, as you said, the, the virus going on and then, you know, other current events, I'm sure even, you know, 
a lot of our own listeners within their own re, um, marriages, their own relationships are feeling a little bit of this powerlessness as well. So yeah, excited for our, our discussion today. Yeah. I just want to highlight what you said right there before I forget it, but that you felt like you needed to recalibrate and having that awareness that, wow, this energy that's coming to me, right, that I'm, these emotions I'm feeling right now, uh, isn't really where I want to stay. And so then you're like consciously deciding, okay, I need to kind of recenter myself. So we're going to talk about that before we get into this, um, though, we're always going to share our client win of the week. And I love focusing on these positive wins. And it's always so important that we shift our focus from what isn't working to what is working. As human beings, we're naturally programmed to focus on things that are going wrong versus things that are going right. And one of the foundational um, principles that we teach all of our clients is to focus on a daily win, even if it's the smallest Smallest win, we still celebrate every single win. Um, this one comes from Lauren with permission. When we had a huge talk, some of the things that were said, mistakes, decisions passed, were very hard to hear, but we are both wanting to make it work. Long road ahead, but there's hope. Um, and honestly, as I'm reading this, I'm kind of getting a little bit of shivers because I had plugged this one into our original outline, which was not our topic for today. We weren't really talking about hope or powerlessness. And so um, the idea that she's saying here, there's a long road ahead, but there's hope, I feel like is very timely. So well, even, I mean, this is even a big thing for Lauren in general. Like you you have it underlined here in the the notes, the I just the fact that she and her husband both want to make it work. And that's really, you know, in a lot of our working with the clients, um, you know, I, I kind of recognize if, we can get the couple to that point where they actually both both want to make the, the marriage work it's it's going to it's highly likely that the it's going to get better that things are going to go well so i'm i'm really excited for lauren there i am too and another thing to highlight here is that it was hard to hear like this conversation that they had there were things that were said mistakes and the decisions passed that were very hard to hear um and so continuing to push through it even though it's hard and, and working together on that is awesome. Instead of letting the challenge of it and even, you know, maybe some hurt, tender feelings there, um, some maybe some guilt, some remorse, you know, any anything like that can be really hard to go through. But it sounds like they're both committed to going through that process rather than shying away from the pain or becoming like a victim to that. So it's awesome. All right. So Mark, um, challenging times in our lives personally. And I know I'm just kind of throwing you on the spot because we didn't really prepare for this, but you and I, we both pretty openly shared here with our audience, different challenges that we've gone through personally mm -hmm. and, and challenges both in our marriage as well in our personal lives and how we kind of overcame that sense of powerlessness. So would you like to share any experiences first right off the bat? Sure. Um, yeah, like, like Heather mentioned, we, Heather and I are, I'm fairly open about this. I actually think that uh, one of the reasons why we are actually here, why we actually have some people listening to us is is a result of uh, some of the challenges that we have each uh, respectively overcome. Uh, so, I mean, for those of you who aren't aware, like for me, uh, me being here is a direct result of like having some big challenges. The, you know, it was, it was several years ago where, I'll, you know, just, I'll admit, I made some big mistakes. I was going through, uh, I, was, I was finishing up school. I was coming to the end of like eight years of school, essentially, um, uh, undergraduate, graduate work. And uh, this was also at a time where I was working a full-time job and a part-time job on top of that and going to school. And we just had our third child at that at that time, so stress was running really high for for me. And I'll just say I, I made some mistakes. Uh, some uh, the result being that you know weeks before I was meant to uh, graduate, everything was you know I had my career planned out. I had everything kind of laid out in front of me. Uh, the director of my program said, okay, you know what, everything's been good up until now, and now we're going to dismiss you from the program. And I, was, and I was crushed. I was absolutely crushed because I, I was 
preparing for everything to suddenly become easier because everything was all my work was <laughs> I wasn't going to have to work two jobs anymore and I wasn't going to have to go to school anymore and I already had this uh, nice job lined up and that was all gone I uh, and so then you know what was I going to do I didn't have that piece of paper essentially to justify all the many years of work and tens of thousands of dollars in debt that I had gone through and I'll, I'll, I came to the this point where I I I felt very powerless and I uh, was in a decent depression at that that time in my life uh, so I'd gone from very fulfilling work to having to work uh, at a warehouse to in order to make ends meet getting up at three or four in the morning to just make it work uh, so that was kind of the, the situation I was in. Uh, honestly, the what really pulled me out of that was uh, the support from, from my wife. And I'm very, very grateful to have Jen in my life. Um, she saw that I was struggling here, that I was very dis you know disappointed in myself. And she decided, okay, she's going to, do something about this. She started getting all, very much into personal development, uh, and you know, from there, you know, tried to to pull me along with it. Uh, eventually, we kind of decided, okay, this isn't uh, where we want our life to be, and we set some goals. Um, you know, <laughs> one of them actually being, okay, I'm, I, you know, I wanted to have this fulfilling career. I wanted to be able to use the education that I had. Uh, and the end result is here I am. I'm talking to all of you. This is, you know, some uh, many years later, too. So that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's where you were trying to go with the, the question, uh, Heather, but uh, I mean, certainly at that time I felt powerless. And I really, I, feeling stuck it just it wasn't fun the the way out of it uh, I remember a specific speech um, that I listened to oh, I don't even know how many times dozens of times um, to really motivate me it was uh, the speech by Earl Nightingale it's called the, the it, and it has a title it's the, the strangest secret uh, and one of the big things that it talked about was uh, basically having a purpose, uh, actually setting a goal and, and going towards it, which sounds like something very simple. I mean, this, I'm doing the, the, the speech injustice by kind of summarizing it as, as that, but, um, you know, actually consciously choosing the direction that you want to go in your life made a big difference for me. Awesome. Thank you. I was thinking, pondering, like, what are the times when I felt the most powerless in my life? Um, and there were several that stick out to me. The first real one that sticks out to me was um, with the Twin Towers, September 11th, as a teenager, witnessing that event live on television in the morning um, and recognizing how small I really was in world events and how in the blink of an eye, everything could change for us, right? So I think anyone who's been through that, who's been through war, who's been through um, any kind of natural disaster, and we realize that we are pretty small and insignificant in comparison to some of these bigger powers out there. <clears throat> and then also um, the most debilitating powerlessness that I have felt was um, actually going through postpartum depression. I'm a very driven go-getter type of person. And um, to have my drive just be completely sucked away and be in a state of just apathy where I really didn't care anymore about hardly anything. And all I wanted to do was just stay in bed and I'd never experienced that kind of depression before. It made me feel really powerless to that. And I had no idea how am I gonna get out of this? How am I gonna overcome this? And so similar to you, Mark, um, luckily I had friends and I had Ben and I had people that were able to kind of help me along through those times. And I had to surrender some of my pride and allow them to do that and recognize that 
I don't even want to work on this right now. I don't even know how I'm going to work on this right now. Um, but yeah, honestly, the biggest thing was like, I don't even want to do it. <laughs> I don't even want to try. And so how am I going to overcome it? How am I going to get through it if I don't even want to try to do it? <laughs> and so I knew that like on a conscious level um, that I had to do something. And so I just, you know, continued forward and then reached out to the things that felt right to me and the right solutions came to me. Um, including at, at one point there was medication involved to help me get out of that. And then I even found a totally different um, therapy to that, which is amino acid therapy. I'm not going to go into that, but for me, that was exactly what um, was the right path to get out of that and to heal from that. And then to be able to get my drive back and get the intention, the focus on, on what I wanted. So at first the goal was just to just feel better, right? Just, just feel almost anything, right? At that time. And then as I took those tiny little steps and acted on those little inspirations that came and the guidance that came, um, then it creates that positive momentum. And uh, the other day, uh, just actually two nights ago, we were watching Lord of the Rings and I am a huge Lord of the Rings geek gonna admit it. It's my favorite movie. It's my favorite book. I'm still obsessed with it all these years later. And I think I probably yeah. always will be. I, I, I wish I could get my kids to to watch that with us. We, we Our oldest is 13 and we, for some reason, can't convince them to watch. Those movies. <laughs> Jen and I love them as well. But anyways, I'm sorry. To yeah. No, I think my boys, they love the violence. <laughs> they just do. They love the, the contest. But um, there's that one part where they're in the minds of Moria. Or what can I say? Right whatever, the mines. And this is the first one. And Frodo says, I wish the ring had never come to me. He's talking to Gandalf. I wish none of this had happened. And Gandalf so wisely says, so do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And I looked over at Ben and we were both had like tears in our eyes because that is exactly what we feel like we've been through time and time again. We've had to go through things that we would never have asked for, um, but have actually been the greatest blessing in our lives when we can look back. Horrible to go through. Um, would never wish it on anyone, but still so grateful that it happened because we came out on the other side. And so that's really what the focus of this is, is choosing to love what is and surrendering what we cannot control and taking action on the things that we, we can control. So that idea of surrendering what you cannot control, when I look at what's happening on the media right now, and when Mark and I, when we talk to our clients and we hear their, their worries and their stress and their pain and their, um, it's really a lot of fixation on everything that's going wrong and things that we cannot control. It's easy to see where that comes from because as we're focusing on things that we cannot control, we're giving our power to something else. And that's really a normal human reaction. Um, and Mark, you know, like you and I both have talked to our own spouses about how we don't feel really in control with a lot of things happening in the world right now. But well, I mean, that, that idea right there is interesting enough. It's, it's kind of at the heart of many, like anxiety-based disorders, which is interesting to talk about. It's, you know, a lot of anxiety is kind of this idea that I'm going to try, you know, I'm, I'm going to worry about these things that I don't actually have any control over. Uh, so, you know, you might have this, um, you know, like agoraphobia, for, for instance, you know, this fear of going outside is, because they say, okay, I can't, uh, I can't control whether I'm going to be safe when I leave my my house, or obsessive compulsive disorder. They're trying to, they're they're worrying about like these grand problems, like if I, you know, if I do these rituals, if I wash my hands for 30 minutes, you know, maybe then I won't be able to to get sick. And a lot of the things that are they worry about with these kind of extreme, these are extreme versions of of this, is. Um, worrying about things that ultimately can't be controlled and so then when you try to really clamp down and control it and it doesn't really work then the anxiety ramps up and it's frustrating and maddening um to, to be dealing with something along those lines mark and we've seen this with our, our clients and on our audience here even with their marriages right this not maybe to that you know not hopefully not to that extreme no. but you know more often than not we feel that sense of um, powerlessness in the relationship. And so what are some of the tendencies that we see? 
when okay, so are, for, yeah, for things like that, like um, I frequently have clients come to me and say, okay, my my spouse is considering divorce, and it's, it's going to have a you know that that, sort of, that prospect there has a huge huge impact not only on our clients' lives, their their children, you know, it has this big rippling effect. And like one of the the big themes that we see is this that a very sense of powerlessness. My spouse is planning something that might have this huge negative impact on my life. And I don't feel like I have any control over the outcomes. And so we get into these situations and people make mistakes. They they break down, they start begging, they start pleading, they start uh, or they might get angry and they might yell and scream at their spouse, how dare you do this to me? And, or, you know, it, it can go in a lot of different unhealthy ways as they try desperately to grasp onto some control without really approaching it with a level head or a, you know, with a clear goal in mind. And so what will you know, what sometimes the, the state of our clients sometimes when they get to us is they say, okay, uh, my spouse is considering leaving. I've now uh, felt completely powerlessness or powerless and reacted to that. And now I've made these mistakes and, uh, you know, I've pushed my spouse further away. Now that I'm thinking a little bit more clearly, now that I can uh, be a little bit more calm about this, what do I do at this point? Uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of, you know, not an ideal situation, but a much better mindset to be in uh, when you're starting to to get over that and start to get to the point where you're tackling problems again. Right. And for everyone that's going through that compounded with everything else going on in the world right now, um, I just give you some grace and I hope that you can give yourself some grace as well, because that's a lot to deal with. <laughs> it is It's a lot to deal with. And so just recognizing I am where I am. And when you recognize that the stress, the overwhelm, the feeling of powerlessness is really compounding, you have that little warning voice, okay, ask yourself the question, am I focusing on something I have no control over? Um, and more often than not, you'll realize, yeah, I am focusing on something I don't have control over. I don't have control over the past. I don't have control over decisions I made years ago or yesterday or a minute ago. <laughs> like the past is the past, right? I don't have control over this other person. I don't have control over this situation. Um, and so shifting your focus to what you can control and allowing it to be and choosing to see even the lesson in the moment, right? Of what I can learn from this. And I'll go, we'll go a little bit deeper into that in, in a, in a little while, but I was actually working with my mentor myself, like I said last night, um, for the first time in five years, I have been terrified, I'll be honest, terrified of cancer coming back. And I truly had not felt that energy or that fear in five years. Like I really thought I'm never going to deal with that. It's in the past. I'm not going to be someone that's going to obsess over it coming back. I'm not going to live with fear. I have a second chance at life. And I'm going to live it fully. But I think, again, we are being so bombarded with all of these uncertainties right now. It kind of brings up our own personal things that maybe are so deep that we don't recognize them. And so I was feeling like, man, I've like digress. I've gone back. And she was helping me recognize sometimes you feel like you're digressing. You feel, sometimes you feel like you're going back, but really you've just evolved to a higher level. And now there's something inside of you that's saying, I'm ready to face this. And so choosing to focus on what I can learn from this and why I might even be experiencing it helps to break out of that feeling of powerlessness and helps you to see the lessons that life is wanting to teach us if we allow it. And then as we see, okay, maybe it's trying to teach me that I'm ready to face this and I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to actually fully heal from this instead of just thinking I've healed from it. <laughs> I'm ready to really heal from it and really overcome that um, and become better and stronger as I go forward. And as I do that, I can help other people as well. So I'll admit like what you said there about, you know, learning a lesson, Heather, that's when I'm working with our clients, that's the absolute my favorite clients to work with is when they've come to that point where they say, okay, things have happened. I can accept what's happened. I can 
accept that mistakes were made and now i'm going to look at this as okay what kind of lessons can i learn from what has happened and how how do i go forward you know that's absolutely the the attitude that takes people out away from this paral the idea of powerlessness and, and many challenges is to really have a, a whole lot of grace and acceptance for what has happened and have a clear a, you know a clear desire to go forward a clear path forward saying okay now that these things have happened what have i learned from this and what am i going to do differently um, right and every challenge is a in my opinion is a gift it's a blessing in disguise to help us learn and grow and so i was even applying that to the situation with our country right now and some of the cruelties that were going on um you know excessive force being used and it really weighs heavy on my heart as i know it does for many many people and so i was like what's the lesson here and i realized you know this can be an incredible opportunity for us as a nation to improve the way that we handle these kind of situations to become unified in the sanctity of human life um to really stand behind our, our rights as human beings and to heal and improve like we can really use this as an opportunity even though it's it's tragic, it's awful, but where is the lesson in this and how can we use this to help us become better and stronger um, and to have each of us recognize the power and, and um, sanctity of human life. And as we do that, that can actually become unifying. But when we stay in the fear, that often turns into like, okay, I'm, I'm afraid and I feel powerless, so I'm gonna act out of anger and I'm gonna fight fire with fire. And when you fight fire with fire, you only create more fire. And so we have to make a conscious shift if we really want to heal things, if that's our true intention. And we do that by focusing on what we can control. Um, and so it may feel like we, as just one little person out there, we can't do much for the future of humanity. You know, I can't even do much for my marriage. I can't even do much in my family, but there's always something that you can do um, for your future. I love this quote by American author, it's Wallace D. Waddles. He's again, another, excellent personal development law of attraction guru <laughs> and he says the very best thing you can do for the world for the whole world is to make the most of yourself and so it's a true principle that we cannot control what happens to us we always control what we do about it how we think how we feel how we act and so if there's one thing that i believe that the world needs right now is that we need people willing to become the best versions of ourselves. We need people willing to step up in their marriage and to say, you know what, I've made mistakes and I'm going to try to do better. Um, I'm going to learn from this, I'm going to grow. And as we each become a better version of ourselves, that allows humanity to become a little more conscious, right? A little more aware, more compassionate and a little more loving. And to me, that isn't just some, you know, kind of hippie kumbaya, statement but I believe that that's true we each have more power than we could possibly imagine and as we have a sphere of influence that sends out ripples um, into the world I, I like this point this is kind of the where uh, the conversation that I was alluding to that my wife and I were having earlier today this is kind of the conclusion that we we came to is we said okay uh, because Jen and, Jen and I have been talking a lot about the um, the riots and protests and whatnot uh, recently. We have uh, family members, my brother and his family uh, live in Minneapolis and uh, like the the, pre the police precinct that got taken over was a few blocks away from his house. Um, so <laughs> he had, we, we've been talking about it a lot. He, he had this, uh, he did this live video where he's around on his bike uh, the night the, the the riot started and it was kind of filming a, a lot of what was going on. It was just looking crazy. But anyway, so Jen and I were talking this morning. We we're saying, okay, there's a lot of people um, that uh, we're connected to either on social media or, or personally, and a lot of just people in general who were really expressing a lot of hate, anger, um, a lot of fear. And we kept talking about it and we kept talking about it and we noticed that, okay, we also were starting to feel a little bit of that our, ourselves. And so at, towards the end of the conversation, we we're like, okay, do we want to keep just cycling these conversations, expressing frustration and, and anger over what's, what's going on? Um, what do we actually, what do we control in the situation? What can we, what can we do? 
Uh, and it was this this conclusion that really felt like it it really lightened the mood quite a bit because you know we kind of said to ourselves, Jen and I, okay, here we are, we're expressing all this frustration. Do we need to just keep talking about this? Uh, is it is it healthy just to keep talking about this? These things that are frustrating us, but we don't actually have any control over. And we said, okay, what's we need to actually let some of this go. And then we said, okay, we're gonna let some of that go, but where can we actually make an impact? And so we were saying, okay, we can, you know, offer support to our the family that's that are being affected. We can uh, you know, for we, we can talk to people over here, we can have you know, in our own community, uh, you know, 20 minutes away, uh, the city closest to us, we there's protests there. We we are asking ourselves, okay, do we want to get involved with some of the the peaceful protests? Mm-hmm. As we're making decisions there. We and we have this discussion: what can we control? Which actually felt so much healthier than just the, this continual conversation about what's frustrating us, why we are unhappy with what's happening, why people, why other people can't be different, and they. Yeah, it it instantly turned around as, as soon as we started talking about okay, what is in our realm of control, and what are, what do we actually consciously want to do about this? Yeah, so you shifted from being reactive, which is normal and instinctual, and we all go through reactions, <laughs> to being proactive, right? And when you're reactive, you're really giving your power to your emotions and to a situation. Whereas when you're proactive, you're taking action and you're making a deliberate conscious choice about where you wanna go and what you wanna do about it. And that does give us that sense of peace and and lightness, even if the situation is still very challenging. Um, My mentor explained to me, there's an evolution of emotions, right? So powerlessness is right down there at the very bottom, right? And then apathy would be below that. So apathy means I can't do anything about it. I'm not even gonna try right? I just completely give in. Well, what's above that is anger. (laughs) And so it feels better to be angry about something than to feel powerless. And so that's the next like natural human instinct is if I feel powerless, well, then I'm probably just going to feel angry because if I feel angry, then at least I'm rising up on the scale and I'm feeling like I have a little bit more power. And of course, above anger would then be, you know, the more positive, um, proactive emotions of, of choosing love, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, kindness, um, and action, of course. And so just kind of recognizing that, um, that anger comes from a desire to feel better it does. We want to feel better. We don't want to feel powerless. And when you're going through your marriage and you're feeling powerless, right. That often comes out as anger or pushing and, um, doing what you can to try to control a circumstance that feels very out of control. And knowing that that's natural is fine, but is that where we really wanna be? Is that the highest level that we could operate at, right? Or is there a better way we could look at this? I love the question that's asked in the book, A Mini Course for Life. Do I want to experience conflict or do I want to experience peace? And recognizing that we can choose that at any moment. And every time I feel like my anger monster is raising up in me and I'm so frustrated or so overwhelmed, I'm like, do I want to experience conflict? Even with myself, like, do I want to experience this inner conflict or do I want to experience peace? And when we decide that, wow, I want to experience peace, then we ask, you know, how can I experience this with peace? How can I experience this with ease? Not that it's easy, but that I'm more instead of fighting it, I'm going with the flow of it. And instead of just reacting to it, I'm becoming proactive with it. And as we choose to do that, um, that's how we experience that that true inner peace. Um, Mark, any other thoughts about that before we go on? No, I think uh, you know it really. You <laughs> summed it up really well there. Um, you know, the it's it really is about you know being able to move on is a is a large part about you know those sort of questions there like what can I do to you know if I want to experience peace if I want to uh, how can I experience that ease peace or love I mean that's it you know consciously choosing the direction you want to go in is, is so very important yeah for me this is a question that I'm asking myself every day because I've been getting in my own way 
And I, I know that a lot of you can relate to this. We think about the goal that we want or the outcome that we want, or we're just so sick of the way that things are. We just want something to be better. Right. But we create this like huge momentous challenge. Like it's this mountain that I'm going to have to work so hard to summit and it's going to take everything. And I just don't even know if I want to deal with that. Right. Um, but I believe, I truly believe that there is power in, in surrendering and surrendering the need to control, not surrendering to like give in or give up. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but surrender that need to try to control everything and to go with the flow of life. There's a saying, um, that the ocean denies no rivers all rivers flow to the ocean, no matter what course they've been on, no matter what challenges they've been on, they all flow to the ocean. And it becomes a beautiful mixture that the earth needs. And then the water is recycled again. And so going with the cycles and the flows of life, knowing that there are challenges and that there are rapids and there's turmoil, but there's also beautiful, peaceful times as well. And to embrace that in life rather than fight it, really helps to free that energy inside of us so that we can become more conscious creators of our lives and deliberately choose where we want to go. So I just want to sum this up with um, what I shared with everyone earlier. I call it the five gives to really empower and to heal your life, no matter what the circumstances are. And I shared this right at the beginning of, of COVID when it really hit um, our country here in March. And the five gives are these. Uh, you're feeling really stuck. If you're feeling powerless, um, I really encourage you to to experiment with these yourself and see if it doesn't help you or heal you in some way. So the first is to give gratitude. When you can find something to be grateful for, even in the moment, that shifts our energy. Remember that scale of emotions, right? To the energy of love or above. And that's ideally where we want to be. We want to be in the energy of love or above. When we can find something that we're grateful for, even in the moment, then it helps to shift that energy. And then second one is to give growth, which we touched on a lot today, which what can I learn from this? What can we learn from this? How can we allow this to improve um, the situation and to become better and stronger than we were before? And then what can I give out? That is like, who can I help right now? And Instead of it making it all about me and my fear and my insecurity, my overwhelm, my hurt, my spouse leaving me, my spouse doing this, it's all about me and where I am right now. Who else is hurting right now? Who else can I give? And I love, Mark, how you and Jennifer talked about how you could support, you know, your, the family there and who could I help heal with this um, and to really choose to give out, to do, give of our heart to someone else and I know, <laughs> and I'm sure everyone can can attest to this as well, that when we choose to shift the focus from ourselves to someone else, then that heals us as well. Um, and if you're wondering, you know, well, what can I give? What can I do? Like, I, I, you know, I can't go and, I don't know, <laughs> like just devote my life to just complete service or anything like that. But even just the idea of giving your your healing and your blessing and giving prayers and fasting, um, focusing on the faith that you have, the intention that you have for the world. I'm not talking about religion, but I'm talking about the vision that you have for your marriage, for your life, for the world. Um, there's a really fascinating book that Jen actually introduced me to years ago, Mark. <laughs> um, it's, it's showing some studies that have been done that has proven that fasting, prayer, positive energy, um, do affect the mindset and the energy of those around them. And I love that. The book is The Power of Eight by Lynn McTaggart. If you want to check that out, it's pretty interesting stuff. But just know that you can give to someone right now. So really put your intention on who can I give, who can I help? And the fourth one is give up. And this is my favorite one, honestly, like one of my favorite ones, but they're all, they're all equally good, I guess. But give up, but what limiting belief or old pattern can I let go of right now? What negativity, what fear, what self-defeating thoughts, what self-defeating pattern, what negative unhealthy pattern can I just give up right now? And then that brings us to the last one, just to give in. And that's to give into inspired action, to give into the promptings that come to you, those little, you know, inspiration, little light bulb moments, even if it's the smallest, stupidest thing, if you just follow it, <laughs> it helps to light that way and gives you positive momentum in your life. 
So ask yourself, what inspired action can I take right now to improve my situation? As you focus on these five gives, you're focusing on the things that you can control. And as you take action on them, they really help to heal you and empower you. And they also have a ripple effect for good in your marriage, in your family, and, and with those around you. What I like about these is it is very, very much about, you know, we, we touched on this earlier, or I think you did, Heather, instead of, it, it, this is much less about being reactive and being, it's much more about being very conscious or proactive about how you want to approach things. Instead of, you know, reacting out of fear or pain or powerlessness, it's saying, okay, where am I at? What am I going to do? How can I give, you know, it's, it's being very conscious about the direction that you want to go in. And honestly, I think that is sorely lacking in many challenging situations and many, for many, many people. I know I've certainly been in that, that, that sort of state myself at times. And I've, it's always helped always helped when I can slow things down and ask myself some questions, really consciously choose the direction I want to go in. And I think these are excellent questions to, to start that off, to start off that process. And like you, I've, I've been in those times too, where it feels like I don't even have time to think, I don't even have time to breathe, right? And so it might seem like we're asking a lot to be you know, take this time to be really zen and <laughs> conscious or whatever, but this can actually happen very, very quickly. It's even just taking a, just a moment going to like, for me, I lock myself in my bathroom because I've got eight kids and I just need a little, that's where I find my solitude. And I just lock myself in the bathroom and ask a simple question. Do I want to experience peace? Do I want to experience conflict? And then I say, okay, no, I really actually want to experience peace. And in that moment, it just takes a few seconds to make a conscious choice to break the pattern that we're in of reaction and then make a choice on how we're going to go forward. Of course, if you can gift yourself more time to be conscious and to think, that's great. But I don't want that to be something so overwhelming that you think I can't even do it because I don't have time to do go through all these questions. And um, it's not in my natural patterns when I'm dealing with these things. We'll just make one tiny change to interrupt the pattern. We call it a pattern interrupt. And we teach that with the couples that we work with if they're in negative cycles of communication um, or distrusting or anything like that just do a small pattern interrupt. And that can be the pivot point that puts you in an entirely different direction. So I just hope that that makes sense. It doesn't have to take a ton of time. It literally just takes one thought. And if you can just choose to think one thought or ask yourself one question, that can really start to set you on a different path and help you step into your power. Absolutely. So with that being said, um, let's go over to our marriage myth buster that is not really related to this, but somewhat, I guess. <laughs> the marriage myth buster is my spouse needs to make me happy. If they aren't making me happy, then something is wrong with the relationship. So, Mark, any initial thoughts about this? Well, you, you, at first you said it's not really related, but I do think we can make a connection here. And that, uh, you know, a lot of what we are talking about today is the sense of ownership over your situation, the sense of control and letting go of some things that you, you can't control. Um, I. I personally am of the belief that your own happiness is your own responsibility. And then an ideal marriage is about two people who are coming together that are individually happy, but can be more, you know, something more together. But this, this idea comes about and it says, okay, well, I really need connection. I really need someone I, I really need appreciation i really need you know whatever it happens to be i really need growth in my life and my spouse isn't providing that for me which means therefore that this marriage is a failure or it's you know they're at fault they are they are doing something wrong because they are not providing that for me now this isn't to say that there's, um, you know, you shouldn't have certain, I'm not saying you shouldn't have certain standards or you shouldn't have certain expectations, uh, but it's more along the lines of, you know, if you are going to hold this idea like, hey, 
something is wrong with the marriage. My my husband, my wife isn't making me happy. And then it is up to you to do something to change those circumstances. The truth is really only you can make yourself happy. Your, uh, your, your spouse can certainly contribute to that. And if they are not contributing to that, you can certainly take control of the situation and say, hey, I need to have some chats with my spouse. I need to be very real with them. I need to say, this is what I really would appreciate in my, in my marriage. But at no point would I say that your spouse is responsible for your happiness. Uh, I'll, I'll give it an example of something like this, um, kind of a general ex example that I will see quite frequently. Uh, well, I will get clients coming in saying that my, they tell me that their husband or their wife have, you know, are checking out that they have left them. And the, the spouse that's leaving will say, well, I've been unhappy for years. And then I start asking questions. I say, well, okay, well, when did you realize that your spouse was unhappy? And they'll say, I, I had no idea. I had no idea that they were this unhappy. Um, and I, for some reason, I don't know why, but I'm surprised over and over and over again by this sort of sentiment that where people are un unhappy, and are not talking to their spouse about it. They're not taking action to try and do something, to try to communicate or to try to problem solve. And you know, then even more surprised that you know maybe maybe they do do that, but even more surprised when they say, okay, well that's not working. So uh, obviously I, I just need to leave instead of saying, okay, well what do I need to do instead? I mean, sure, I guess in some way, shape or form, you could one could argue that leaving the marriage or divorce is someone taking control of the situation. Um, it's just, you know, here with <laughs> High Thrive Coaching, we, we, we tend to be, well, unsurprisingly, very pro-marriage. And, you know, I'm un, of, of the general belief that there are so many more problems created from separation, from divorce, from a deterioration of the marriage. Um, and so much more that could be done if some attempt is put in. But anyways, getting back to my point here is that you really, you know, there, there's um, these situations where these expectations for someone else to create happiness in you just isn't really anywhere close to being healthy. And these same people, uh, the tendency is that even when, once they separate, they still find that they're unhappy for some, for some reason. And the going along with what our topic of the podcast today, it is so much more uh, productive, so much healthier to start asking, your question, uh, asking some questions of yourself. Okay, um, if I am unhappy, what can I do about this? If I really need my spouse to be there for me, what can I do about this to communicate that need to them, to help, you know, encourage or inspire them or to, you know, to do something, whether you are needing to talk with your spouse or needing to fulfill that need uh, on your own, recognizing maybe some of the other needs that your spouse might provide for you. But the bottom line here is you need to be the author, the provider of your own happiness here and to not rely on, on other people for that. And odd, as odd as it might sound is this is going to be a much more ideal situation for a close knit relationship. Um, you know, I'm gonna say I, I love being around my wife, Jen. She certainly does make me happy, but I do, don't expect her to. And if I am feeling sad or upset or frustrated, then I I need to I recognize that it's not my wife's responsibility to make that better, even if she does do that at times. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. That was a huge shift and a journey for me to make personally. Um, I had such a lack of um, self love, of self confidence, of of that feeling of just being good enough. I, I felt the opposite for so many years that I really made Ben my source of, of happiness, of filling in those gaps for me um, because it was easier than 
looking at it myself. And honestly, I didn't even really consciously know to look at it myself. I just kind of felt like that's what it should be. And then when he didn't, and I think a lot of us could say, you know, if, if I'm not happy, then something's wrong in my marriage, right? Probably many of us could raise our hand and say that we felt that or thought that at one point. But the truth is that you are the source of your happiness, as Mark so um, eloquently shared with us. Just what you're sharing there is like, it, you're saying, talking about this time where you really leaned on him. And the thing is, if you if, if that other person is the only thing that's bringing happiness, there's going to be some point where that person is going to be a little bit weaker or they're going to be struggling themselves. And to solely rely on someone else for this, I mean, it's, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, they're not going to know you as well as you know yourself. They're not going to. They can't physically always be there for you, even if you are married. Um, you know, maybe they are going through a rough time. Maybe they are struggling a little bit themselves. What happens then? And that's why, you know, just like you were saying, it's it was a big shift for you to say, okay, I need to be happy in and of myself. Right. And that's exactly what happened is that then he wasn't at some point and it made me realize okay, do I just leave the marriage or do I actually work on this myself? And I'm so grateful that I had the intuition um, and the perseverance to say, no, I need to fix this inside myself because I recognize that um, I need to, I need to fix this. Otherwise it's going to stay with me no matter what. <laughs> mm -hmm. And once I did heal that and I found that kind of inner worthiness to just unconditional love for myself, then I was able to more fully experience that in my marriage. Like you said, Mark, I feel like it's like the amplifier when you take people um, that are both knowing that they are their own source of, of I'm well, I'm whole, I'm good enough, I'm happy, right? Yeah. Um, loved. And then you bring that together, it just magnifies that. And it's a beautiful experience. So yeah. awesome. So if you would like a respite from the uncertainty and the stress that you're feeling right now and that's going on in, in our world, um, I'd invite you to join our live masterclass that's happening every week. Uh, we do that over here in the Thriving Marriage Facebook group. So I invite you to join the Thriving Marriage Facebook group if you haven't yet. Uh, we would love to have you and to join our live masterclasses to help give you that respite from the craziness going on right now and help take some of your power back. <laughs> So next week, we will go back and share with you how to create a unified vision with your spouse and even what that means when they say they need to, quote unquote, find themselves. So how you can support them in understanding what their vision, their goal is, and how to create a unified vision together as a team. So thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you and we hope the very best for each one of you. I can see everyone. Thanks for listening to The Thriving Marriage, your A to Z blueprint for not just surviving marriage, but thriving. Until next time, my friends, thrive on. Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, Let's turn, turn tragedy, tragedy to, to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choate.